Welcome, I'm Jess Gomez from the Intermountain Medical Center Heart Institute in Salt Lake City. We welcome you to this discussion regarding some of the exciting research projects that we have underway and are presenting at the American College of Cardiology Scientific Session in Orlando. I'm pleased to be joined by Dr. Stacy Knight, who's with me and with our Heart Institute research team. And we're gonna talk a little bit about two exciting research projects that you have presented regarding a diabetic population. Let's talk a little bit about that. Tell us okay. uh, what the studies were. Okay, well, thank you. So. The studies were involving a population of diabetic patients mm -hmm. that ha did not have coronary artery disease. So we had just over 250 individuals in each of the studies. Okay. And we wanted to look at the biomarkers that are associated with subsequent cardiovascular disease, as well as diabetic complications in these populations. What, what interests you about that? Um, if we can determine what factors, in fact, we were looking at proteins, what proteins were associated with these biomarkers, we might be able to intervene earlier mm -hmm. in these populations to prevent the onset of coronary artery disease or diabetic complications. Okay. Well, very exciting. Tell us a little bit about the methodology of the study, and then most importantly, let's talk a little bit about your findings. Okay. So um, from these 200 indivi 250 individuals, we took blood samples, mm -hmm. we processed them, and were able to run an assay looking at over 4,000 proteins to see the level of the proteins in their blood. Okay. And then we wanted to look at triglyceride levels also in these individuals. That puts them at increased risk for cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. And then we wanted to also look at hemoglobin A1C levels in these same individuals because that will put them at increased risk if it's elevated of diabetic complications. Then we took those two biomarkers, triglycerides, and the hemoglobin A1C and okay. looked at how those 4,000 proteins may be associated with an increase or decrease in those levels okay. for a diabetic population. And what did you find? So we found that there was actually 33 different proteins that were associated with triglyceride levels. And that the majority of these were in three protein pathways. The first protein pathway that we found to be associated with triglyceride mm -hmm. levels was insulin-like growth factor um, binding protein okay. um, pathway. And so that, as there was a three proteins in that pathway that was associated with an increased um, risk in triglyceride levels. Okay. The second protein pathway was immunoglobulin. And um, again, we found several proteins in that was associated with an increased risk in triglycerides. And then the last one was fibronectin. And that protein, again, was associated with triglyceride levels. The interesting thing about finding those three proteins, we already knew that they were associated with diabetic, um, an increased risk of having diabetes. But this also showed that maybe they're further associated with an increased risk of triglycerides in a diabetic population. And as a clinician, why is that, and researcher, why is that so interesting to you? Because it, it might explain why di the diabetic population has elevated triglyceride levels. Mm -hmm. Some of the proteins that are impacting the, their increased risk of diabetes may be elevating their triglycerides okay. at the same time. Okay, and, and what are the next steps? This is an exciting finding. What, uh, where do you go from here? Well, the next steps would be to further evaluate this finding. Mm -hmm. Look at what is the cascade event. Is it that they get an increased level and then it causes diabetes, which goes on to increase their triglycerides and then increase the risk of cardiovascular disease? Mm -hmm. What is the exact mechanisms that are going on to behind this association that we found. Tell me about the arm of the trial that involved A1C. Okay, great. We found um, two protein pathways involved in that, plexin and semaphorin. Okay. And what those pathways have been shown to be associated with is diabetic complications. So what's interesting is we found people that had high risk or elevated A1C levels mm -hmm. also had elevated levels of these protein pathways okay. and therefore it might explain why some of them will get diabetic complications. And what does that tell you as a, uh, as a researcher? Again, it may tell us that these proteins are that we know are associated with diabetic complications. Maybe we could intervene by some sort of medical treatment or use it for further screening to, in order to prevent them from progressing into having more of those diabetic complications. Well, congratulations on this exciting research and how exciting the, uh, 
uh, research that you're doing here at the Heart Institute to further our knowledge uh, about heart disease and the role that it plays with the diabetic population. Thank you so much for joining us. And we invite all of you to stop by the Intermont Medical Center Heart Institute booth in the exhibit hall of ACC 2018 and to stop by and talk to Dr. Knight and our other researchers about some of the exciting uh, projects and abstracts that are coming out of the Intermont Medical Center Heart Institute. Thanks again for joining us and have a good day.